That's a Volvo Ocean 65 deck made in France being fitted to a hull made in Italy. It's one of the major construction steps and it's happening at Green Marine in the UK. A strong and precise bond is absolutely critical. That's some serious precision. It's starting to look like I'm going to be spending a lot of time here from now on because things are starting to really hot up on the Volvo Ocean 65 project. This is boat number one. It's really exciting because I'm just now starting to get a sense of the boat's power and presence. I wouldn't go so far as to say that she's straining at the dock lines just yet, but for sure things are looking good. Because there's so much going on, I'm going to get straight into it today, so let's start out by looking at a key piece of equipment that I know is near and dear to my employer. So I'm meeting with Chris Weir from RK Marine. He's installing the Volvo Penta D2 75 engine into the boat. So there it is. Well, we're going to do a good day today. We've got the D275, Volvo's biggest compact engine, fitting this uh, racing yacht. And is it fitting? Is it going in okay? Yes, it's going in. We've got, we're doing a dry run first, just to make sure everything's right. We want to get this one right first time. Next one, perfect. So I asked Chris about some of the important services that the engine provides. We're using that, the, the, the engine to run the hydraulic systems, the other electrical systems. Water maker. Water maker, so forth. It's just doing a vast array of, of, of work. Because it powers the keel, right? Exactly, exactly. This is the heart of the yacht. Without this, they're not going anywhere. Without this, they're screwed. Exactly. Right now, we're coming out of the companionway hatch. It's very different to the Volvo Open 70. It's very much influenced by the, the, the French single-handed boats. This lip that I'm sitting under here seems not, doesn't seem that big, but it's gonna be, make a huge difference in protecting the crew. Here's another thing that we saw, another French influence, something that we saw in the last race on board Group Armour, central winch. Didn't seem to hurt those guys, so hopefully this is going to be a neat feature that's going to really be, be a big bonus for the, for the Volvo Ocean 65. This one here, near and dear to my heart, this is a camera bump. Under here, we're going to have a, a pan and tilt camera. Very proud of that. Nice piece of kit. Now this bump is great, camera bumps are great, but this is here for crew comfort, and more importantly, crew safety. This scallop here, this shape built into the bump, is here to, to deflect waves and water, keep it out of the cockpit and away from the crew. Should make life a little bit more bearable, but most of all, it'll make life safer. So here we can see the front end of the Halyard Tunnel. On a, on a boat where the mast goes into the boat, water always gets inside the boat through the mast, but with a deck step mast like this, and therefore no mast hole, it should be much drier inside the boat. Later on we'll go and look at the mast step, the actual mast step that locates it here, and we'll see the Halyard organizer that, that takes all the lines back through to the pit winch. some of this hardware. Turn that off first. Okay, bolt number one. What we got here? Halyard organizer. There's the mass step. The mass will drop down onto that. That's a big old piece of kit there. This is the, the halyard organizer that will go at the, the front of the tunnel, just, just after the mast. As you can see, all, all the halyards will come through these holes here. Other smaller control lines will come through these ones. Well, I just love looking at all this, this hardware. I could just do it all day, and I really do need to get a life. Dave's just reminded me that tonight, we've got a ferry to catch. Tomorrow, we're gonna be finishing the sails off in France. Let's go.
Just round the corner from Multiplast, where the Volvo Ocean 65 decks are made, is the North Sales Loft. I'm here to meet Gautier Sargent, and he's going to show me one of the sails that we saw being made at the 3DI factory. Is that the... is that one of the blanks that I made at Minden the other week? Exactly. The sails arrive in France as blanks, and at this point are completely unusable as sails. After a thorough check, the first step is to trim them down to the correct shape and size. Great care must be taken, and here we see one of the highly skilled sailmakers using long battens precisely positioned so that she can make the cuts. Next, the sail gets tapes stitched along each of the three sides, the loft, the leech and the foot. Tensioning lines are fitted to the sail at this point, and then the sails are fitted with batten pockets. Because these are furling head sails, the battens are vertical rather than horizontal. You know, it always amazes me though with, the, with these sails. It's so stiff, isn't it? It's like yeah. Well, that's the key to it. Stiffness is it's like what makes them good. Now we're back at Green Marine, and I'm with Volvo Ocean 65 project manager, James Dad. He's down here making some last minute checks before the keel bulb and fin are put together. James is the man who's responsible for making sure that the boat is 100% accurate and that they're all exactly the same. I've got a question for you. Will there be lasers? There will be lasers. Cool. No, can I just move this with my hand? You can just move your hand to get it roughly right. And then what you need to do is look through that eyepiece. Yeah. I'll get you a step. Yeah. <laughs> and press the red button, right? Yep. Oh. <laughs> nice one. So this is one hell of a keel fin, isn't it? How, how long are these? Is it deeper than a Volvo 70? It is. It's 280 millimeters deeper than a Volvo 70's keel. It's a 28 centimeter, yeah. Like a ruler. Yeah. So the big question. What's this thing weigh? It's 3,450 kilograms. And so what's this weigh? That's 1,450 kgs. Okay, do the math. Uh, the total weight when we get to the end will be just under 5,000 kilograms. I wanted to ask you about this, this inclined keel pin. It's pretty revolutionary, right? Well, I'm glad you asked me about that. I brought some diagrams. Oh, you did? Yep. <laughs> right, <laughs> cool. So, so as we know, We've got a canton keel in the Volvo Ocean 65s. Right. And as you can see from this drawing here, actually the keel is closer to the horizontal than it is to the vertical. Yeah. So you've got this thing that's basically a 4.7 meter wing in the water, trying to go through the water in the most efficient way we can. Yeah. What we end up doing is actually pulling the nose up a little bit. Yeah. So the water's now hitting here, and it's coming underneath. Some of it's coming over the top. Yeah. You've got more of it coming underneath. So number one, we reduce the amount of drag. And number two, we're creating lift, we're reducing the displacement of the boat. Right. So my question for you is, will we go faster? Definitely. Right. So I'm underneath the hull, looking at the inclined keel pin that James was telling me about earlier. You're probably wondering why there's a dirty great hole here in the bottom of the boat. But don't worry, it's supposed to be here and it'll be well sealed up by the time, uh, by the time we go sailing. Well, it doesn't really show on, on camera. From, from my angle, I can see that the boat just has a lot more rocker than a Volvo Open 70. What that's gonna do is make the boat really fast and safe in big waves downwind. Well, this is the, the reverse bow. I just love it, and it's just so, so cool. It just looks really, really good. I think it's time for me to hit the road.